One of the most prominent aspects of being a human is our natural disposition for evil. But are we born with it? Or can we live in a world without it someday? Some of us think there's hope. And for some others, this will never change. I know more about you than even your own parents. Hard to believe, right? Well, listen to this. I know for a fact that you're probably watching this video while procrastinating, slowly getting closer to that deadline, and wondering if what I have to say it's worth your time. What you ignore is that this documentary is entirely about you, and I will prove it in various ways. Here's the first thing you need to consider. 10 minutes ago, you were mindlessly browsing through Facebook. You scrolled down your everlasting feed, looking for a mildly interesting post. When suddenly, something inside your brain told you to switch. Then, you opened Instagram. You watched a couple of stories, double-tapped on seven photos. And before you knew it, the same switch button from before was pushed again by your brain. Now you're on YouTube, listening to my voice and you're telling yourself. Yes, that's me. Something else I do know about you is that you live paycheck to paycheck, you have zero saved money and you're one bad decision away from being completely broke. Now you're thinking, Why me? What's the reason behind that? Is there something I'm missing? And most importantly, Does it have to be that way forever? All humans are predictable. We act according to patterns and we also handle money following very distinctive regulated behavioral patterns. It's no wonder that the vast majority of us struggle with our finances. It feels like we always spend more than what we make, doesn't it? Regardless if we make more every year, that fact remains the same. The answer is simpler than what you may think. But just because something's simple to understand, that doesn't mean it's necessarily easy per se. You see, there's a deep correlation between human behavior and financial success, or lack thereof. Training and controlling the emotional side of your brain is an essential step towards unlocking the opportunities that can potentially grant you wealth, power, time, or any combination of those three. However you want to call your idea of success. Recognizing and understanding those patterns is believed by many to be the key to success, but that's only half the story. The solution to getting out of the so-called rat race can be hard to find, but at the same time, it's an interesting journey that defines the era we live in. An era marked by capitalist juggernauts, empty get-rich-quick coaches and, ironically enough, the largest number of millionaires in recorded history. As of 2022, the amount of millionaires in the world has reached historic numbers. How do they do it? How is it possible for a single individual to amass such an unfair amount of wealth? One that can compare to the GDP of an entire nation? You have no option but to snap out of it. We're all in one way or another after the same goal, albeit at different stages and with different tools at our disposal. In 2009, right in the middle of a tour, the greatest pop singer who ever lived, Michael Jackson, passed away in unexpected circumstances. News of his sudden demise were eclipsed by the fact that he was almost $400 million in debt despite being the best paid pop superstar ever. Even his infamous Neverland Ranch was near foreclosure due to his tight economic situation. That alone tells you that financial literacy does not come with fame and success. You can be extremely wealthy and at the same time, ridiculously bad at money management. But what does it have to do with you, you ask? Well, you might think that your money problems will disappear the day that you earn a lot, be it by your salary, your business or even if you win the lottery, but the reality is that it doesn't matter how much money you can generate. If you can't manage it, then you're considered financially illiterate and you're at high risk of losing everything on a whim. This has been documented time and time again. Famous personalities lose everything they have because of bad decisions. In music, in sports, in literature, and any other profession you can imagine. So, how are you any different from them? In truth, you're not. But if human evolution tells us something is that as a society we can adapt to changes relatively quickly. The real question you should ask yourself is, Am I going to be able to keep up with the rest? 
Greed is the main cause for one of the factors that prevents the advancement of society, or at least it delays it. Of course I'm talking about corruption, but where does it even begin? To understand corruption and to really grasp the big picture, we must first analyze the basics. The concept of enough is enough does not apply to people with weak emotional intelligence. The same people that through elaborate scams and schemes go beyond their ways to satisfy their greed. Which, by the way, cannot ever be fully satisfied because of their own disconnect with reality. Take a look, for example, at your relationship with the government. And if you're watching this from anywhere in the world, make the parallel with your own government. On a scale from 1 to 10, how much do you trust it? I bet that number is not that high, right? You just think the government's just batting a thousand and telling us the whole truth? <laughs> That's a strong stance to take. Now imagine for a moment, if you will, that for a day you become the leader of the country you live in. The decisions you make in those 24 hours would directly impact the lives of millions of people. Do you make those decisions based on the greater good or do you let the 24 hour time limit dictate how greedy you can be? If you choose the latter, perhaps you would do all those things that otherwise you would never have the chance to do. That's the easy way. Time plays an important role in this equation as well. Death is inevitable, so it's only natural that you try to reduce the time it costs you to become wealthy. This is the way of thinking most criminals use to calculate the reward against the effort. Only when you understand that time is not against you, will you really reach your true potential. Now, on the topic of corruption and its link to greed. There are clear exceptions to this rule, obviously, but in most cases, individuals who lack emotional intelligence tend to be attracted to positions of power, such as politicians and public figures. These individuals often prioritize their personal interests over the needs of the people they serve. As a result, they engage in corrupt activities, amassing wealth through illegal means and exploiting others. One example of a politician who fell victim to greed and corruption is former Illinois Governor Rod Blagojevich. In 2009, Blagojevich was arrested and later impeached for attempting to sell former President Barack Obama's Senate seat for personal gain. Despite having a law degree, Blagojevich was driven by his desire for power and wealth. Another example is former Congressman Randy Duke Cunningham who was sentenced to eight years in prison for accepting over $2.4 million in bribes from defense contractors. Cunningham lacked emotional intelligence and allowed his greed to override his sense of ethics and morality. These are just mere examples of the consequences of letting one's feelings dictate one's actions. But at the same time, these are just cases that have surfaced to the public eye. Imagine how many more we don't know about, and the thousands of other cases that fly under the radar in other countries. One thing is certain, all of these people have something in common. They always attempted to follow the get-rich-quick path by all means necessary. Are you the same, or are you willing to make a difference? We could dive deeper into what corruption is and its consequences for mankind, but that would take the same amount of screen time as all Marvel movies put together back to back. And even if, we would only cover the tip of the iceberg. But the main takeaway from this chapter can be summed up in a single quote. If something is worth doing, it'll cost you time. So please, we urge you not to take the shortcut and succumb to corruption in any way, shape or form. Greed is the shortest pathway towards a miserable society. Control your impulses, master your emotional intelligence, harness the power of patience and see how true change can be achieved on a monumental scale. Society will not cease to be greedy overnight. But you can. If enough of us make that a commitment, then it's only a matter of time for mankind to improve. From an evolutionary standpoint, herds have always been considered an advantage against predators and other dangers in the wild. We no longer exist in that realm and yet, this survival trait remains with us. It's way more comfortable to do as the majority does than venturing all alone in life. Or really in anything you can think of for that matter. Money is not the exception. I love people as I meet them one by one. People are, the, are just wonderful as individuals. You see the whole universe in their eyes if you look carefully. The herd mentality describes how people can be influenced by their peers to adopt certain behaviors on a largely emotional, rather than a rational basis. But as soon as they begin to group, as soon as they begin to clot, when there are five of them or ten, or even groups as small as two, they begin to change, they sacrifice the beauty of the individual for the sake of the group. When individuals are affected by mob mentality, they may make different decisions than they would have individually. 
In other words, not controlling your emotions hinders your finances. You do not see it, or maybe you do not want to admit it, but it's true. Exchanging time for money in a 9-to-5 job or any of its variants has been a staple of human behavior for the past 100 plus years. That is slowly changing and more people are realizing that this employment model is no longer sustainable if they truly want to make every second of every day of their lives count. Money is the biggest motivator for anyone to get a job, but are you really willing to sacrifice your happiness, dreams and future for a salary that may or may not be there tomorrow? Do you see yourself making a career for 30 plus years at the same company? Understanding these three simple premises will make all the difference. One, If you're employed, just like the vast majority is, it means that the value you give to your time is tied to the salary you get. Two, Time is the only asset in the world that cannot be regained once you exchange it for money. Three, You must find a strategy that allows you to generate income that is not attached to your time, meaning that you do not need to actively work in order to get paid but we'll touch on this in a bit. The Illusion of Choice For now, let me ask you this. Do you think you're in control of your life? In the 20th and 21st century, humans have systematically exchanged their time for money because of the way our economic system is structured. In this system, that we mistakenly call capitalism, you are required to work to earn a living and meet your basic needs. You exchange your time and labor for money, which you use to purchase goods and services that you require to survive. Everybody knows that. And you might be forgiven to think that you are a purebred capitalist. Well, sorry to break it to you this way, but that's not really the case and you're not really in control of your life. The true capital is the amount of money that you should dispose of after all of your basic necessities are met. But if you live paycheck to paycheck, do you really have capital to invest? Yeah, don't think so. This exchange of time for money affects our decisions regarding our lives in various ways. Firstly, it limits your ability to pursue activities that do not generate income. For example, in this flawed system if an individual wants to spend time painting or playing music, they may not be able to do so if they need to work to earn a living. This creates a trade-off between work and leisure time, and individuals may have to sacrifice their personal interests to meet their financial needs. Does that sound like freedom to you? At this very moment, your brain is aware of this but it's making an extra effort to deny this as a mechanism to reduce pain, even if the pain is psychological. But fear not. You'll come to understand what I mean by this in a moment. The illusion of choice arises because individuals often believe that they have free will in choosing their occupation or career path. However, in reality, their choices may be limited by economic and social factors. As previously stated, an individual may not be able to pursue a career in the arts if they come from a low-income family and have limited access to resources and education. Moreover, the pressure to earn a living may lead individuals to make decisions based solely on financial considerations rather than their personal interests or values. This can result in individuals feeling unfulfilled or unhappy in their work, leading to mental health issues and a reduced quality of life. Situations like these are dramatically present in countries like Japan or South Korea, where males are the most common victims of self-harming tendencies due to the immense peer pressure to become a functional part of society. Now, there are several ways in which we can attempt to bypass this illusion of choice and increase our freedom and autonomy. First, we have 21st century education. Education can help individuals gain knowledge and skills that are not dependent on their economic or social background and enable them to pursue a wide range of careers and interests. However, our stance in education is pretty clear. If you want to know more about it, then check out our previous video about the educational system in the United States. The link is in the description. Secondly, self-awareness is another important tool for bypassing the illusion of choice. By becoming more aware of our own biases, values, and motivations, we can make more informed and conscious decisions about our lives. That's why we encourage you to always practice some form of meditation and introspective analysis. Third is philanthropy. Economic inequality is a major factor in creating the illusion of choice. By reducing it and providing individuals with greater access to resources and opportunities, we can increase their ability to make meaningful choices about their lives. And this last point particularly resonates with our core values. As you know, our mission with this channel is letting you know that a better life is possible through financial education. If we can reach a wide audience and they get value out of these videos, they might get inspired to help others. 
Nothing would be more satisfying for us than making a real impact in the lives of thousands or even millions of Americans and inspiring them to make a real change in their lives. It's the Roman circus. What does the emperor do when the people become restive? And when the people are asking questions and when the people don't like the policies of the emperor? He sends them to the circus. He creates a circus. He builds a giant coliseum. And he begins to throw the Christians to the lions. And he has great chariot races and football games and basketball games, all to keep the idiots preoccupied with things that don't mean anything in the scheme of the entire world so that they don't have the time to learn what the truth is, so they don't ever get smart enough to learn how they're being manipulated. While we may think that we know it all or have no hidden biases, a study conducted by Stefan Nagel and Ulrich Malmendier proves that people invest according to how the economy looked when they were young adults. As such, someone who's experienced high inflation may not see bonds as a good investment, while someone who's been through turbulent times for the stocks may think the opposite. Can you identify the pattern here? How many times have you seen that kids who grew up in poverty remain poor throughout their lifetimes? Yeah, countless times. Now, remember the last time you saw or heard the classic underdog story? There's nothing classic about that. In fact, that's the exception and Hollywood has made it its mission to feed you a lie, as with many other things. All the media in this country, radio, television, and print, is all owned by five corporations. Most of us who were brought up in poor conditions will not even try to break the poverty cycle. It all comes down to the way your brain is wired. This documentary's purpose is to raise awareness and to let you know that you have the power to change your financial situation for good. All of these corporations that own the media are owned and controlled and members of the Council of Foreign Relations sit on the board of directors. Birds born in a cage think flying is an illness by Alejandro Jodorowsky. This premise, although simple, exemplifies perfectly why us humans tend to be heavily influenced by our surroundings. If you constantly see your parents struggle with money from a young age, you end up normalizing that scenario and subconsciously reaffirm that you must also have the same struggle throughout your life. This generational wealth chart shows you how much time is required by families to break the cycle. As I said previously, it does not have to be that way. Another misunderstood quote is, Money can't buy happiness. This doesn't mean what you think it means. Most people assume that the poor must be content with their financial situation because money is associated with pure evil. In actuality, what that quote actually means is accumulating excessive wealth without a sense of purpose eventually results in reduced levels of happiness. The truth is that money can buy happiness if it is used wisely to find and fulfill our life's purpose. By investing in experiences and activities that align with our values and passions, we can find a deeper sense of fulfillment and happiness that goes beyond the temporary pleasure of material possessions. After all, money is just a tool without any feelings. It just amplifies the feelings and the desires you have in your mind. Unfortunately, Hollywood's narrative has often reinforced the idea that happiness is only attainable for the wealthy and privileged. In movies and TV shows, we are presented with images of opulence, luxury, and excess, creating an unrealistic expectation of what it means to be happy. The characters that are depicted as happy and successful are often those who have amassed great wealth, without any consideration for the consequences of their actions or the impact on others. It also reinforces harmful stereotypes about poverty and financial insecurity. The poor are often portrayed as being content with their financial situation, as if poverty is a choice that they have made. This completely disregards the systemic and structural barriers that prevent many people from accessing basic necessities and opportunities that would allow them to achieve their goals and aspirations. However, the truth is that happiness and fulfillment are not dependent on one's financial status, but rather on one's ability to find and accomplish their life's mission. Now, we are not here to tell you how to find your call in life. That's something you must do on your own, obviously. But we will tell you a few of the most common ones that people choose and then you can select which one you identify yourself with. Imagine there are three groups of people. First, we have Group A. People in this group believe that being happy is the ultimate human aspiration. Nothing more, nothing less. 
In here, you'll often find the selfish, the interested, the plotting, the greedy and the ill. But you'll also find kind, honest, hard-working people, true providers and caregivers too. 80% of people in the world choose this path. Group B consists of those who don't know what they want to be in life. They ignore the basic notions of what being a human means. They are content with not thinking about their place in the world and their main aspiration is to survive. Just like in the first group, you'll find the same kinds of people but at a lower level of consciousness. 19% of people in the world belong here. And then there's group C, the smallest of the bunch, the so-called 1%. Here you will find exclusively two extremes. People with a very similar mission in life but drastically different motivations. Individuals who want to take society to a whole new level by nurturing the human spirit. And crooks who only desire to absorb the world for their own personal gains at the expense of everyone else's feelings. Yes, the 1% of humanity is a radical combination of two worldviews that fight with each other. As we stated in chapter number 2, economic inequality is a major factor in creating the illusion of choice. Then, the more financial freedom you have, the easier it'll be to make such a choice. It's up to you to become free. And it's also up to you to select which group to belong to once you are free. I'll make a case as to why 99% of people remain poor throughout their lives and how you can become part of the 1%. Right out of the bat I'll inform you that this is not as easy as it sounds, but it's stupid simple. Most individuals tend to always confuse those terms. For instance, meditation is something that might sound simple on the surface because all you need to do is sit down, stay quiet and focus on your breath, right? Nothing can be farther from the truth. Meditation requires an incredible amount of discipline, concentration, clarity and clearing the mind of all its clutter to achieve a higher level of reasoning. Many people struggle to maintain a consistent meditation practice even after years of trying. This is a prime example of something that it's simple but not easy because it requires the one resource that we value the most. Time. And understanding such a resource is exactly the key between becoming rich and staying poor. The rich understand this concept very well. Humans' perception of time is limited to our own lifespan. The amount of goals we can reach is tied to the amount of years we have left. It seems that we are constantly in a race to achieve greatness before we die. And it's only natural. After all, no one can escape death. So we indulge in activities that we think require less time to give us tangible results. Criminals and corrupt individuals always choose the shortest path because it requires the least amount of time, but with a higher risk. Sadly, get rich quick and the hustle culture have become terms infamously associated with business in recent years. In truth, the longer you can wait for results, the farthest you can go in life. As we have stated countless times in other videos, if you can wait a few months to get results, you can win. If you can wait one year, you can win big. If you can wait 10 years, you can be the best. If you can wait a lifetime, you can change the world. The reality of the world is very different to what we just said. It seems that everyone's in a desperate situation, always looking for the new hot thing that would make them rich overnight with minimum efforts. There's a reason we don't really talk about cryptocurrencies here in this channel. At least not yet. Things like crypto, multi-level marketing, making garbage content like pranks and scams on social media and even OnlyFans are just a few examples of trends that are constantly appearing to satisfy the need of people to get fast results with little effort. Trends come and go but the hunger for easy money remains. This behavior comes from a deep disconnection from reality and a strong lack of emotional intelligence. The earliest you can take control of your emotions, the earlier you can start building wealth. Even if under the current global circumstances young people are eager to make it big quick, at the same time, more and more reasonable people every day are realizing that having a stable job, working for 40 years and enjoying the rest of your life off of a pension is no longer an option. And they are the ones who might be right. When you decide to exchange your time for money, you're bound to be a slave to your income. If you don't work, you don't earn. If you get sick, your income vanishes. Simple as that. That's why it is crucial to find a way to make your money work for you. Unlike you, money will never complain. It will never get tired. And it will definitely never ask you to come home early. In that regard, establishing a business is the way to go. However, your expectations must be set in a way that they align with your reality. Making a business work comes down to a simple principle. 
to make a promise and deliver on that promise. That's all there is. The most successful businesses in the world apply this idea and they manage to stay relevant for a long time. This is just one of the non-negotiable attributes a great business must have. We already covered some of the best business ideas you can start in a relatively short amount of time as well as the best digital skills to have if you want to make more money online. Both links are in the description. But here are the basic principles of funding a business that works. Number 1. Focus on building a valuable product or service that solves a problem or meets a need in the market. The first strategy for achieving a million dollar revenue milestone is to focus on high margin products or services. This means that you should concentrate on selling products or services that have a high profit margin. In other words, the difference between what it costs to produce or deliver the product or service and what you charge for it should be as large as possible. To achieve this, you may need to adjust your business model, streamline your operations, and perhaps even consider offering new products or services. For example, you may need to find ways to reduce your production costs or increase your sales prices, or you may need to explore new markets or customer segments. It's also important to note that focusing on high-margin products or services doesn't necessarily mean that you have to sacrifice quality or customer satisfaction. You can still provide excellent value to your customers while also generating high profits for your business. By focusing on high-margin sales, you can improve your cash flow, invest more in marketing and sales, and ultimately grow your business to the million-dollar revenue milestone. Number 2. Identify your target audience and understand their needs, pain points, and purchasing behavior. In other words, creating a sales funnel. A sales funnel is a marketing strategy that helps convert potential customers into paying customers by guiding them through the buying process. The idea is to create a sequence of steps that your potential customers will go through, from the moment they become aware of your product or service to the moment they make a purchase. To create a sales funnel, you need to first understand your target audience and their buying journey. For example, you could start by creating a lead magnet, such as a free ebook or a webinar, to attract potential customers to your website. Once they are on your website, you can offer them a free trial or a low price product to get them to take the first step. As they move down the sales funnel, you can offer them more expensive solutions that meet their needs and go beyond. You can also use email marketing to stay in touch with your potential customers and offer them valuable content or special deals to keep them engaged and interested. By creating a sales funnel, you can streamline your marketing efforts and focus on attracting high-quality leads that are more likely to convert into paying customers. This can help you increase your revenue and achieve your million-dollar milestone too. Number 3. Create a strong brand identity that differentiates your business from competitors and resonates with your target audience. Building a strong brand is like creating a unique personality for your business. It's how customers perceive your company's products or services. For example, think about Apple, their brand is all about sleek, modern design and innovation. Even though they actually do very little innovation at all. Now, that's debatable. What's not up for discussion is their epic brand presence and what it evokes. When you see an Apple product, you immediately recognize it as it would have a unique DNA. That's what you must emulate to differentiate yourself from the rest. Number 4. Develop a solid marketing plan that includes a mix of channels and tactics to reach and engage with your audience. Every business model requires their own marketing plan. However, there are some principles that apply to most of them when we talk about marketing, and that is putting the target audience's preferences as the main priority. In the past, you would have to invest literally thousands or maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars in marketing. Nowadays, with the rise of social media and its capabilities to enhance word-of-mouth strategies has changed the game forever. People often forget that word-of-mouth stopped being what once was. It can be 100 times faster than before because every marketing asset you create has the potential to become viral. Some businesses are actually relying on it exclusively and still making profits. Choose the right approach and stay consistent. Number 5. Establish partnerships and collaborations with other businesses or individuals who can help promote your products or services. Cross-promotion is like a secret weapon for businesses. It's super powerful and can totally level up your game. Basically, it's when two or more businesses collaborate to promote each other's products or services. The simplest example is, if you own a coffee shop, you can team up with a nearby bakery to offer a special deal. Buy a coffee at your shop and get a free pastry at the bakery. This way, you both benefit from each other's customer base and you can both increase your revenue. It's a win-win situation and it can be a great way to reach new customers and build long-term relationships with other businesses. 
Now, this is just that, an example. Remember to always aim high. A small business and a big one both require the same amount of energy, time and dedication to run, so you might as well just aim as high as you can. In any way, if you want to take your operation to a whole new level, you should definitely consider cross-promotion with other businesses or even influencers that are relevant to your niche. Number 6. Leverage social media and other digital platforms to reach a wider audience and build relationships with customers. We can't stress this enough. Your social media presence must be a vital part of your organization. Don't sleep on this. If you think everything is saturated already on platforms like TikTok, YouTube, Facebook and Instagram, you're wrong for two main reasons. One, if you niche down enough, you'll find a proper market for your high-ticket product or service. And two, the internet is still in its infancy and it will be for the next 50 years or so. This is just the beginning. Unless some nuclear cataclysm happens, social media interactions are just going to become more and more important. Number 7. Focus on providing exceptional customer service and prioritize customer satisfaction. Look, we all have had some negative experience with customer support on some level. You know how utterly frustrating it can be. We don't need to lecture you on this. Just always keep in mind that it's more cost-effective to nurture an existing customer than to reach and fulfill a new one. That should be enough reason for you to do it correctly. Implement a strong emphasis on providing over-the-top customer service. Number 8. Continuously innovate and improve your products or services to stay competitive and meet evolving customer needs. In no other time in human history we have seen so much advancement in so many areas at the same time. Quite literally. If you want to stay relevant, don't follow the steps of Blockbuster, Yahoo or Blackberry. Do you need more examples? Keep learning and experimenting. Companies mimic life. If they don't move, they are not alive. A company that's willing to accept and embrace change is a company with a blueprint for success. Improve your products. Period. Number 9. Build a strong team and foster a positive company culture that values collaboration, creativity, and accountability. It is important to hire employees who are not only skilled in their respective fields but also share the same values and vision as the company. A collaborative environment encourages employees to work together, share ideas, and innovate, ultimately leading to increased productivity and success. A culture of creativity fosters an environment where employees feel comfortable suggesting new ideas, taking risks, and exploring new opportunities. Additionally, accountability ensures that every employee is responsible for their actions, meets deadlines, and delivers high-quality work. This leads to a more efficient and effective team, which can ultimately help the company reach its goals and scale faster. But beyond that, the risk of hiring someone for the wrong position is only comparable to wasting time and energy. And as we all know, time is gold. As Richard Branson once said, take care of your employees and they in turn will gladly take care of your customers. Number 10. Finally, be patient and persistent in pursuing your goals and be willing to adapt and pivot as needed to stay on track towards achieving your revenue milestones. If you have the mental strength to consistently do an activity for an unreasonably long amount of time, your chances of failing reduce dramatically. In other words, even if you're presented with better opportunities over time, focus on developing an idea that can further enhance human existence and its values and eventually you will reach a point in which money will come as a byproduct of your actions. Always aim for excellence. And speaking of excellence, this can only be achieved if you reduce the amount of mistakes you make on a daily basis. That's why this video right here will tell you exactly those things you need to stop doing right now if you want to be wealthy and wise. Click right here to check it out.